This particular topic deals specifically with foundation financials. So uh, this presentation is meant to give you a basic understanding of how we account for what we do at the foundation. Um, somewhere along the way, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was suggested that I provide you some current and relevant information, keeping in mind that any information that I do provide today is both preliminary and unaudited. Okay, so that's that's the disclaimer, as they call it in, in the biz. Um, so we start all of our transactions really, sorry, all of what ends up in the foundation financials is, um, is really money in and money out. We refer to it here as processing. Um, it all ends up somewhere on a statement of operations or internally we refer to it as a statement of activities. And it's broken down into several elements, revenues, grants, expenses, and administrative fees. Uh, the end result of what we do on a year-to-date basis is to increase the value of our assets under management. And ultimately, what we talk about today will um, help you look at the audited financial statements in the annual report, but understand them a little bit more. And if I've done my job, hopefully that's what will happen. I, I start with this slide because it's always a good one to start with, uh, but I've got two reasons for bringing it up. Anna says money comes from people and is added together. The money grows in the bank. This is called interest. The interest is then given to people and programs that make wealth a better place. Yeah. So, you know, if you think about it, what we do is fairly simple. I prefer to say that what we do is not complicated, but it is, however, complex. Uh, and that's the one reason, you know, I bring up the second reason I bring up this slide is to, it's just, there's a caution here. It's more about uh, money growing and making interest. Uh, I think people need to understand that we have people investing our money and that money is subject to fluctuations. And just like your RSP and mutual funds, the money can ungrow or lose value. So processing money in and money out. The financial information that, that, that results at the end of the year, um, it, it's, it, it comes from recording hundreds of transactions. Every transaction gets allocated to a specific fund. Um, and, and this is a huge database. Ultimately, we summarize our funds um, by division or what I call buckets. These are categories the operating fund, endowed funds, and non-endowed funds. And I think we went through this a little bit, but endowed funds, we keep forever and we invest. Non-endowed funds, we collect and we grant to probably within you know, months, in some cases, um, you know, a year. But there's always an encouragement when they haven't been granted out to have our fund holders convert them back into endowed funds. Because of the vault, that the foundation made a decision to, to, um, to purchase a software called Founded. Founded is specifically designed for community foundations. Last year in 2021, we processed 1,100 individual donation transactions and related tax receipts. We also processed 300 individual grants. The advantage of Founded is that it allows us to do many things that we were doing manually a lot more efficient and um, that it generates financial information sooner and more accurately. Uh, the one in particular, the calculation of admin fees and the allocation of, of revenues and um, monthly earnings, um, at one point it was being done manually and it was being done quarterly. Uh, with the advent or with the investment in Founded, we found that we've been able to do that on a monthly basis within, I'm going to say, a week of the, of the month end. So getting into the statement of operations or activity in the revenue section, this is what we do. We, we, we take all of those transactions that we collect and we fit them into three major categories. Our donations come to us either by check or cash or e-transfers. Uh, some of the people uh, at this presentation have pre-authorized monthly payments. And we also use Canada Helps and Benevity as third-party 
I'm going to call them collection agencies, where people could use their visa cards and that money comes to us a week in, in, in arrears generally. The big, the big gifts though, however, come in the form of securities and uh, the odd time we get a bequest. So we lose our friends, but at the same time, they, they make the foundation uh, richer for it. So total donations for 2021 were a million five sixty eight thousand. Our investment income comes to us in, in three forms through our investments, interest and dividends, which Anna was so um, clear to, to let us know about. We, however, though, we do buy and sell those investments with the help of an investment manager. And as you can tell, uh, we had a fairly uh, good year when it came to uh, uh, realizing some gains on the sales of investments and the, and the growth of the portfolio uh, in the markets. So dividends, 323K, realized gains recorded last year, 1,199K, and gains from portfolio uh, growth, 774K. The other form of revenue, which we, we hope to grow more in 2022, is from other fundraising activities. And last year, the main, main activity was the around downtown, and it contributed 42,000 to our revenue base. The second part of our statement of operations is, is um, money spent on grants. This is how we make income. This is why we do what we do. Um, and last year, in 2021, we granted out in external grants $1,195,000. And if we were to take that by division, and, and, and when I talk about endowed funds, this is what we refer to our spendable balance granting. And that of the $1,195,000, was coming from endowed funds, and the other came from our flow through funds, granting $860,000. Now, there's, uh, we report grants in, in a number of ways. The one uh, way that you would notice on the annual report is by stream. And this is where we, we have some of our, this is where our grants committee gets involved. And you can see that although uh, the largest comes from our directed flow through grants at 850, um, community grants is a big project of our committee, our granting committee, uh, and so is Kids to Camp. Uh, and I believe scholarships is, is where they get involved. The last piece of the, the activities or the operations and where we spend money is on expenses. This is, this is how we do what we do. And I've broken that, that up into two categories. And it's like any other, call it business for lack of a better word. Um, we spend money on marketing, business development and event expenses. We spend money in administration. Um, and, uh, which includes rent and insurance and uh, IT services. Our payroll is, are, are the passionate people that keep things going. And then the other big bill is, is audit fees. So I, I put in the audit amount. We spent a total of 359K um, in, in expenses. Um, payroll made up to 18, audit fees made up 27, and rent made up 32. Those are the big ones. The investment management fees are allocated directly to the, to the individual funds. And I think you'll see when I get to the, um, um, to a couple slides down, um, we, we spent 69K to earn over $2 million, which is not a bad investment. So I'm, I'm not sure it's uh, placent management, uh, wealth management deals with, with our portfolio. In order for us to support the, the administrative expenses, we're funded by charging um, fees to individual endowed funds and individual flow, flow through funds. Um, uh, the charge that we make generally uh, to our endowed funds is 2% of our endowed pooled marketing value. And, and we do this on a monthly basis. This is where um, I said before, Foundit is doing a great job at doing this for us. It really is. Um, a, a click of a button. In 2021, we recovered 253,000 from our endowed funds. We collect 5% on our flow through donations. That, that, this is when uh, it's a one-time fee, when the donation comes in. And, and generally for uh, flow through funds or non-endowed funds, money comes in and it goes out. Uh, and it's calculated on, as I said before, on the donation amount. Total fees that we calculated and allocated to 
flow through funds in 2021 was $32,000. I think if you haven't realized by now, 221, the year 2021 was a really good year for the foundation. We added over 20 million to our net, net assets. And I think I'm gonna have Beth Ann speak a little bit uh, to that. So the idea that I'm showing um, is our assets under management. And I just wanted to give some context. This is something I've made in the summer um, is how, how we are designed to grow. So we have grown steadily since 2015. Um, we've gone from 9 million up to, uh, well, we're now ending this year at, at over 15 million in, in assets under management. So you can kind of see that we have some pools here and the blue is obviously the endowed portion. And we have had some, some flow through that's been sticking around um, and that's been invested. So those are included in our assets under management. And then we also have this yellow section, which is the cash and equivalents. And because of the ability with Foundin, we've been trying to keep more of our money within the invested pool um, so that we are, while we incur a little more risk by exposing it to the market rather than holding it in cash, it also gives the opportunity for more growth. So we've become a little leaner on holding cash. So these are the assets that we are continually managing in the hopes of creating growth. Um, in addition to the donations and the money raised, this is one way we're really trying to build the, the foundation. There's also another section you'll see, which is called funds held for others. And as you can see, it starts out large here and then it shrinks down in 2019. Um, Funds Help for Others does get invested in our, our asset pool. Um, it is exposed to the market and we manage it on behalf of another organization. And um, that number decreases quite significantly in 2019 with the withdrawal of funds. And the portion that's here that's the biggest um, that's left with us is um, also our friends of the public, Guelph Public Library. And that will go to support the new library when it's built. So we will also see that decline. Um, but there's always the opportunity for this part to turn over as we help other organizations manage their money um, and you know, realize returns on it. So um, what I wanted to just show is the steady growth that we've had. The return rate is also here on the direct on the uh, endowed pool. I believe the calculated amount on this is about four and a half percent over over time. The big thing that we had this year was an excellent set of returns. Just the idea that we, we grow two ways. We grow through donations and we grow through the investment management side. So he's got the slide up here that shows you where we're at. Um, our endowed pooled returns this year are over 16%, which is fantastic. The markets itself, um, most of the main indices were up around 20%. Um, and obviously we're not going to be exposed to the full market for full risk and opportunity. So um, our non-endowed pool is also grown quite significantly. We're up to over 1.3 million and our total assets under management closed out the year at $16 million. So this is a huge amount of growth and it's come both from some revenue generation as well as significant returns. So I'm gonna try and stick to the script on this. This is fairly important. Um, the dashboard is a year-to-date report that provides a monthly update to our board with regard to some key GHCF metrics. It was designed specifically, sorry, it was designed by Beth Ann with, a, with an input from a number of key st stakeholders, which makes it even more relevant as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the purpose I think initially was the avoidance of presenting detailed financials in a traditional format. Uh, that de detail can sometimes be a source of confusion for, for, for many people. Uh, the dashboard itself uh, is, is divided up. It, it almost looks like a newspaper, a two page newspaper a uh, quarter of the first page is made up of donations, which we refer to as what support we've received. The other half of page one is made up of uh, grants information, what impact we've made. And page two deals with the financial health of our portfolio and the financial health of our operations. Um, I'm going to bring up the dashboard. There it is. Beth Ann, do you want to take us through this? I mean, you're the mastermind. I. I just prepare it moving forward. So <laughs> quickly running through the donation side, we try and show you a comparative. So every month when this, this is created now, we're able to do this monthly um, and we'll be sharing uh, the December one that, that Caesars finished um, for you hopefully this week. Um, the donations, we try and give you comparatives or point of reference that's critical to each of those categories. So for donations, showing 
where are we growing the dollars, whether it's endowed flow through operating, those donations coming in, that really is a key for our, our um, asset development people, our marketing, our ambassadors. They want to see those numbers to see who's getting the message and where is it growing. We give you the top donation um, that are funded, both endowed and non-endowed. And it is pretty important that we give you those break aparts by division so that you, you have the context of what's happening to those dollars. The endowed portion will then add to the pool and they become in perpetuity for our impact over the long term. Uh, the grants, we are showing you our vital signs um, sector, which we will get into in our last presentation, um, just so that you have an idea of growth um, and impact. And so where are we um, through both flow through and endowed, where are we creating impact and what um, organizations are we reaching? Um, see you the next page. And then the financial health of the portfolio. So this is a, a smaller summary of what I just showed you. Um, and it's going to be year to date. So you'll see specifically the a shorter time frame um, to see the impact of, of the whole pool growing. Um, and just the basic metrics that we get from RBCDS and the fees that we pay. We think these are key indicators of how well we're managing the money that we have. Um, and then the last portion, which is the health of the operations, we want to show you that breakdown again, what Caesar went through at the very beginning. Where are we getting our money from and how are we supporting ourselves? What are our expenses? So you can see um, a dollar for dollar donation, the traditional metric that you would see from many charities is dollars in in donations and the operating expenses that offset it. You see so many um, scorecards for charities. That is not applicable to us. It's just not a metric that works. But one thing that we did share is the percentage of the operating expenses that are going to be covered um, by the endowed admin fee. So just to get an idea, how are we doing? How are, is our pool grown enough to continually support us? And we still have a shortfall there, but that's where fundraising kicks in to help support us. Um, and then obviously at the bottom of that, we have the operating reserves. So that shows you that we have a reserve for operations. Um, we're grateful that this year, because of our excellent investments um, and good markets, it's grown. So that's, um, that's the dashboard, and it should give you just a few snapshots of, of key information on how we're doing financially. <laughs> so it's, it's issued monthly, and then after it's issued, we put it on our portal for access for our board members to see. Uh, if they want to look at last month and compare it to this month and so on. And so just to see how we're doing. And so that's important for us to disclose. We're going to wrap this up kind of almost where, and, and I put this slide in for a reason that I, I, I remember last week, he asked about some information regarding last year. Well, the, I, I want people to know that our website is a wealth of information and I want to be able to take you there uh, and show you, if you're not already aware, that all of our financial information is on our website uh, in two formats, on an annual basis in an annual report. And if you were to click right here, I think this is going to get me uh, to my financial statements. Here are what our traditional uh, financial statements look like. And if I look at our statement of operations, it, we've got the three columns that we've talked about uh, that I referred to. We've got the revenue with the donations being the big number. Um, we've got our grants as being another large category. And, and then the breakdown of our um, expenditures with administration fees being shown here basically is an offset between the various columns. Uh, the end result of this, and I'm going to leave this with you. I, it wasn't meant for me to go through this. This is last year's report. And quite soon, hopefully, and maybe in a month or so, we should have this year's ready. But then, then here, there's, there's a little section about how we're doing. So there's our operating reserve that Beth and I just spoke about. Um, but, but also, there's a breakdown of our investments in our assets um, as well. So that, again, that's one point with regard to the website. The annual report is a much more, uh, it, it's a story and it's much more uh, reader friendly, but there is some financial information here. We always talk, there's, there's the one on grants and, and it talks about the streams 
And I think, I think uh, Dave was asking specifically about last year's granting numbers. Here's where it is, and you can see this going back a number of years, a place where you're gonna go and it's gonna give you some basic information. That rate of return, which this year is uh, 16.54, um, there's the donations number, there's the grant number again. And so for those of you that are not aware that this information is there, I just wanted to make sure that we had a record that, you know, there's a place for you guys to get this stuff if you really want to see it. And if you've got questions, we're always available for that. And that, and that's what brings me to the last slide. We're always available to answer any of questions, whether it's in regard to this particular presentation or anything that you see on a website or anything to do with any funds. Thanks, Andrew. For those that uh, can't see the chat, uh, Andrew has thanked Caesar. Caesar, thank you very much. Oh, you're um, welcome. My pleasure. For, for those that are present, um, these are really hard presentations to do. Um, and the best way I would try to explain it is I think of the movie, The Matrix, when uh, the star looks at the data falling, but he sees a full image, that's what it's like to be inside the foundation. And um, it's really hard to try and keep things um, understandable for those that don't live, eat, and breathe this stuff. And Caesar Bathan, I think this presentation did a really good job of, of capturing some important um, um, items and building blocks. Bathan's got the next presentation, and I'll close with the last one. Um, and I think we're actually looking forward to delivering these presentations. They've actually been really interesting and a fun exercise for us to do. Caesar will agree now that it's done, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think if there's nothing else, thank you so much for attending and we'll distribute the recording and slide deck shortly. Thanks everyone.